This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. What is Chalkboard Chat? It's an MPB education podcast. It's a variety show providing information and resources for teachers, students, parents, guardians, and everyday people on various topics. It's learning something new with every publication. Chalkboard Chat. Find the podcast or listen from chalkboardchat.mpbonline.org. From MPB Think Radio, this is Now You're Talking, the show about the most interesting people and stories of Mississippi, and we are going to make that true today. we got a great show. Thank you for being with us. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey. I am editor-at-large and editorial cartoonist of Mississippi Today. Look, the equivalent of the Oscar, the Emmy, what, the Tony, you name it, from the restaurant world is the James Beard Foundation Award, and it's amongst the nation's most prestigious honors, and it recognizes exceptional talent in the food industry, and today we have two guests that definitely represent that. So I have the pleasure of welcoming the next two Jackson-based guests, their award semifinalist, Chef Hunter Evans from Elvie's Cafe, nominated for Best Chef South, to include, that's Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, and uh, Sophia Muhammad is co-owner of Sam Boo's African Kitchen, nominated for Best New Restaurant. Uh, it, you know, and, and I got to say this, and I, I've gotten to live in Atlanta, Houston, San Diego. And one of the things that I love about Mississippi and I love about Jackson particularly, and I've noticed this for 26 years, is that we are incredibly blessed uh, we punch above our weight when it comes to food. <laughs> we really do. We have great restaurants. We have great food. And so um, thanks to both of you. You're in the studio right now. Of course, you were on the previous show, but we're going to continue to talk, carry on this conversation because, number one, the one thing I have learned in all the years of being in Mississippi, when you do something great on the national stage, yeah. it's something that everybody in Mississippi is super proud yes. of. And so I am super proud of both of y'all because, A, you have earned this award not only because of your talent, but because of your hard work and your grit. Um, And I was joking a little bit earlier, tomorrow is your third (laughs) anniversary. It's like, what has happened in the last three years? (laughs) I mean, you literally started your restaurant a few days before the pandemic shut everything down. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Six weeks prior to shutting down, we have, yeah. um, and then I also had a kid. Oh, okay. Okay. And yeah, that keeps you a little yeah. bit busy. So, and open a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like year. it's like drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> right. So, yeah. okay, I'm a big fan of restaurant rescue shows, and that's when I realized that I am definitely not cut out mentally to do the food <laughs> industry because I would have the wrong menu, and I would, I'd be like one of the statistics that you see. 80% of all restaurants go out of business in five years or whatever. I'd be that guy. <laughs> um, the show The Bear. Yeah. Um, I love the show The Bear because it is absolutely, I have to take Xanax every time yeah, I watch that show. Yeah. Was that literally what your life was like there for a while? It, yeah. I had to, I think one one night I got home from work and yeah, I'm just going to debrief, you know, and I had to turn that off. Mm. It bet. felt too much. Yeah. Too similar. Yeah. Okay. I was going to ask you that because, you know, I, I see cartooning like three men and a baby. They show what's his name? Steve Gutenberg is a cartoonist. That is not what a cartoonist's yeah. life is like. Trust me. You don't yeah. live in a really posh apartment with Tom Selleck living in the place. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> um, but there is a degree of truth to that. Yeah, oh, totally. And I was thinking about that, too, because, I mean, you were in New York. You're a CIA graduate. I love that, by the yeah. way. You're a CIA graduate. It makes it sound like you could kill me with your thumb right. or something. <laughs> but it's the culinary. It's the culinary. Yeah, is, yeah it's a little different. Yeah. Um, CIA, obviously. <laughs> but you, you do that. You come back home, yeah. kind of like he did, but you weren't rescuing a family restaurant. You were creating one from from scratch. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of, you know, I, I traveled and went and did, and I wanted to bring it back home to Mississippi and to Jackson, yeah. where I grew up. Yeah. You graduated, what was it, J.A.? I went to J.A. in 2008. And then University of Mississippi. Okay. 2012. Yeah. And you, um, you got to work with somebody pretty cool up at... at Ole Miss, too, didn't you? Yeah, I started working for John Current at yeah. Bure. Yeah, the yeah. old Bure when it was before it moved around the corner. <laughs> yeah. That's where I started. Wow. So. so when you start in the business, what were the things that you were doing? I was just frying. Really? French fries, crawfish <laughs> tail, you know, the crawfish basket, you know. It's a good little spot, you know. It's yeah. busy, but you can kind of watch the whole kitchen. You kind of learn nice. the rhythms. You learn the yeah. the flow, how things are done. And then you kind of move up, you know. Right. Yeah. I I was just thinking about that because 
when I was about eight, I remember marching in and telling my dad, I'm going to be an editorial cartoonist, which is an incredibly weird yeah. thing to tell your dad. <laughs> I'm sure he was very disappointed, but he said, you'll be the best one ever. <laughs> um, I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm working on it. But when you were little, were you like, you know, give me an easy bake oven. I'm going to be frying some eggs. I mean, when did you really realize that this was something that you just thought was incredibly cool and you wanted to be a part of? I always of? loved it. I always loved food. I always loved being around food. That was kind of the central area you know that my family gathered in the kitchen yeah. at home i never saw or knew anybody really in the restaurant industry knew any chefs i didn't really think of it as a career and i think as a society some people still don't even consider it careers right. the, the way they treat servers right yeah what and is, so what's that just, all about I'm by the way trying to change that I, yeah. you know i just th think people think it's a it's kind of a stepping stone to the next career where i'm yeah. gonna wait right. tables while i right am in school and, you know, we're really like, nah, this is a career. This is a mm -hmm. life, you know, a part yeah. of your life, um, a career choice. Um, so I, but I never really saw that. So I, I was kind of hesitant, like, oh, I'm going to go cook, you know? Yeah. And then graduated high school. It's like, okay, like, I really love it. Like, why not? And like, mom and dad, I'm, in, I'm not going to go to school. How about I just cook? That didn't sound <laughs> that great. So went to Ole Miss and I discovered hospitality management. Yeah. Yes. I was like, okay, that's like the closest thing, you know. Um, and then I had a professor there that really encouraged me to cook and then go to the CIA. Oh, wow. And he was a graduate there. So, yeah, it all worked out, and I was, you know, where I was supposed to go. And Isn't that the, the beauty? A lot of people don't understand the whole beauty of college necessarily yeah. isn't necessarily taking all the classes that you take. It's yeah. usually the oh, people yeah. that you'll the stumble experience. across that will change your life. Or even four years growing up to then go to culinary school wow. and really – give it everything I got yeah. and, you know, really know that's what I want to do. Was that a, was that a huge culture shock for you to move up there and do that? Um, I had been up there a couple of times. Okay. I love New York. Um, CIA is actually 70 miles up the Hudson river. Yeah. It's gorgeous. And so I didn't yeah. have a car or anything. So I was kind of stuck. And so that was kind of like the worst part, but I could get a taxi to the train station and I could be in the city in that's an so hour old and school. a half. And yeah. Take a taxi. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, you know, that really just lent itself to me even more kind of diving into culinary school and giving, you know, a year and a half all my attention to, to class and school. Well, um, not to bring up one of my not relatives, but, you know, I watch Gordon Ramsay, you know, and, and on that and, and the pressure <laughs> and the abuse and so <laughs> forth like that. Well, and you were, you were probably, at, by that point, you were, were you working in restaurants up in New York and so forth? And, and I mean, did you experience that kind of pressure cooker type situation where you felt like maybe you were one of the, you know, shrimp being cooked in the fryer um, while you were learning? You know, it's definitely, there's definitely certain people that, I mean, there's lots of different personalities in the restaurant. Yeah. world and it's a high stress environment so you know you see the best of some yep. of those people um i don't think i was ever really in that situation one of the most stressful i remember was when i was in new york i was working for one of danny meyer's restaurants <laughs> and the new york times critic pete wells had come in oh, wow. and usually they come three or four times to get kind of a general feel you know different servers try different dishes before Do you know they, when they're in the restaurant when you so yeah. they don't tell you but yeah. you know i feel like everyone with the internet nowadays and photos and you can google all these reservations <laughs> or that's a phone that's a phony number yes like, yeah. flag that you know and yes. somebody flagged him or saw him so for the next couple months okay he's going to come in another couple times and it was just like so stressful for a couple weeks or a couple months you know um, oh, wow. We could close down this restaurant just yeah, by, you know, yeah. doing and, Yeah. You know, and the chef's just like, I'm getting reviewed. So he's on edge. I bet. And we're all just kind of like on eggshells around him. To go back to what you were saying a little bit before about people being mean to serves, I've always said that I think the world would be a better place if everybody had one year mandatory yes. having to work in yes. food service. Yes. Yes. Because then we suddenly yeah. wouldn't be screaming at each other on online and stuff like that because right. we would have had our fill of it. Yeah. And, yeah. I what totally page? agree. So at that point, like you said, you're up in New York, you're, you're working, you're, did you have a plan? Did you say, okay, you know what, I'm going to bring this back to, to Jackson, Mississippi? Yeah, I've pretty, pretty goal oriented okay. throughout my life of, okay, by the time I'm 30, I want to open a restaurant. Wow, that what's that kinda, like? Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good. It, you yeah. know, I'm learning to, to rein it back and, you know, 
not say yes to everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just kind of, you know, I want to cook in New York. I wanted to cook in New Orleans. And as I kind of did it, it just crossed it off. And, okay, New Orleans, I thought that was like the mecca. And I did that for a summer while I was at Ole Miss as an externship. Oh, cool. And then... Man, that wasn't like I kind of hung in there. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. And like, all right, New York would be like, if I can cook there, I can cook anywhere. And then, you know, to, for a chef, you know, mentor to say, hey, you should go do it. Like, okay. And then do it. And then you're like, all right, I think I could maybe run a restaurant, you know. Mm-hmm. So just kind of checking off things and, you know, chasing the dream, um, I guess. That, that voice you hear is Hunter Evans. He owns and operates Elvis, and he is also a, uh, I guess, I mean, the the James Beard Foundation uh, being nominated for that. Like you said, how did you find out about it? Um, did you, like, literally just check the website every five minutes, or did somebody um, call you up? similar or? to that. Okay. It was, so I knew that. So you knew it was coming. We knew the day. Yeah. And we had... Only because we were included in the New York Times top 50 restaurants. Yeah, you, knew you might have a shot. So I guess on my you know long list of things, like one day I'd like to win a James Beard Award. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, you know, I've always been keeping up and whatnot. So I, just being in the industry, I've always kind of kept up when they're announcing and whatnot. So they're announcing, you know, what day. And they never set a time. I signed up for the, like, newsletter, email, like, specifically for the awards and check their social media and we're kind of just every once in a while check in and and then finally finally we checked and there was a i think an eater article you know that they were the first <laughs> even before the james beard person, oh really i was like this how is, did you get the list yeah and so um yeah we were like kind of shaking scrolling the phone and that's how we found out. That's awesome. I'm with the James Beard Foundation Award semi finalist Chef Hunter Evans. Of course, his restaurant's Elvis. Fantastic restaurant. Um, celebrates its third anniversary tomorrow. Congratulations. That's that's Thank incredible. You. You've beat all kinds of wonderful odds, and yeah. you've, you've been getting some great praise as well. And I tell you what, and we're going to bring in Sophia Muhammad. She's the co-owner of Sambu's African Kitchen, uh, also a James Beard Foundation Award semifinals for Best New Restaurant. Congratulations. Yeah, and you're congrats. actually coming up on your one-year anniversary. Yes. Thank you so much. We turn one March 5th. Wow. Yes. And it's been... This last year has been really awesome, yeah, uh, tremendous, and and a real a real journey. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into that gener- journey also too. Uh, I figure you two know about as much about what each other does, <laughs> and so I mean we're just gonna make this a huge big fat conversation. Before we really get too deep into that though, the James Beard Foundation Award, um, Hunter, our both of you can talk about a little bit about. What is, and I know it's not your first, You, in a way, you kind of grazed it a few years ago at the 16th Annual Great American Seafood Cookout, which was sponsored by the James Beard Foundation. So I guess in a way you won that. So you got yeah. on their radar a little bit yeah. on that yeah. one. But tell us about what it is and how the prize came to be, because it's been around for what, I guess, about 30 30- 30 years? Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure how old Like 1990, yeah. I think it was. Okay. So don't make me do math. That's why I'm a cartoonist. <laughs> looking, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, you know, when I started cooking, it was always like, that was like the pinnacle of yeah. the industry. Uh, James Beard in America, I guess. Um, and, yeah, I kind of was told it's kind of the Oscars of the mm-hmm. food world. Yeah. Um, so I was always like, man, that sounds really cool. I'd love to be, you know, included. Um but yeah, I think, you know, there's like a committee or some judges and they travel the country. And, well, that'd be a terrible job. Yeah, right. And mm-hmm. then a percentage, you know, they have to eat in so many restaurants and then, and they're all over and they're made up of, I think, culinary instructors, journalists, um, I think restaurateurs and chefs and all sorts of, you know, industry people. And yeah, they come out, with, you know, the 20... I think every list is 20, it's like mm-hmm. the semifinalists. Yeah. And then end of March, they will announce the finalists, which will be the top five. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And that'll be determined by the same or maybe a different committee, judges that will travel. And I think they have like a score sheet. I'm sure they have some sort of similar So you template. really got to be on your A game between now and March. Yeah, so now it's, yeah. uh, you know, the next two months we're... So no wa- no water crises, no yeah, you know no pandemics, <laughs> no, exactly smooth sailing yeah. through them. So then you know then 
all these people come in and it's undercover, you know, yeah. um, they'll dine and then the top five become the, t- the finalists. And then there's the ceremony in June, I believe in Chicago. Wow. Do you so, get it? Like, I mean, what's the trophy look like? Just curious. I think it's a medal. I think it's a, okay. oh, you get a medal. It's like a, oh, no, that's really a necklace, cool. yeah. like okay, a gold cool. medal. Like you've won the Nobel peace prize. I think it's got James <laughs> yeah. Beard's face on it. That's awesome. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. And, and if you win that, how are you going to keep it out of the food when you're cooking? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I sleep with it on. <laughs> yeah. Right. I know. I, I, I won an Emmy, which I, was not on my bingo card. Awesome. I didn't think that was going to yeah. happen. I found out you can actually put toilet paper on the wings. <laughs> it works out really well on that. So, yeah. But that the medals, awesome. I mean, that's really cool. Being that, I mean, seriously. And, and I was looking at the list of the, the finalists. There's a couple of folks down on the coast too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So you know, my friends uh, from Vestige, yeah, also in Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. shout out to them too. So yeah. I mean, I wish we could get them in on the studio today too and give right. them some love also. But um, but it really is great representation for Mississippi to to yeah to get that totally uh, on that. So how did you find out? Because it, it must have been. I mean. <laughs> is there like an indentation in the ceiling when you like hit it when you saw that? So my the way I found out was completely opposite from Hunter. Yeah. At least Hunter was aware when he's been <laughs> in the industry for years. So he understood the importance of the James Beard yeah. Award. Um, I'm new to the restaurant business. Um, so I uh, sh- shamefully did not know about the prestige of this award. Um, so it was not on my radar at all. Right. Yeah. Um, and. Um, I'm on my Zoom calls for, um, you know, for things. And I get a call from a reporter saying, hello, uh, we want to say congratulations for being a nominee. And, you know, we want to do an interview and like saying all these things. And you was to convince somebody was yanking your chain. Right. right? And yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. It's like I'm like, can you repeat it? James like, who? Who, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it was pretty funny, and 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 uh, the reporter was like, no, like you were nominated. Sambu's African Kitchen was nominated, and here I am, like <laughs> doing a quick Google search, and like, what is this about? And um, I'm seeing all these, you know, uh, different articles and blogs that I have been posting it. So yeah. it was the last few days. It was it's been it's been pretty amazing, uh, to say the least. And that's how I found out about it. Um, since then, I've been doing uh, deep research on who James Beard was and how he was this, you know, the first, you know, one of the culinary geniuses of America. And um, he was also a, a teacher. There's a, a James Beard Foundation building in New York City that it's just it's, it's just been really great to um, be able to be nominated by for an award that was named after such a really uh, phenomenal uh, culinary creator. We were talking about this a, a little bit off the air and, you know, you day to day, you're kind of getting in a rhythm, you're getting the food out, you know, you're growing a, a customer yes. base and everything yes. else. And something like this happens. Yes. And suddenly, because I mean, I, I'm running over the weekend with my running group and one of the doctors said, you, I just hated Sambu's kid. You know, yes. and so it's like everybody's now talking and mm-hmm. you suddenly get the rush. Yes. So it's like, and um, the other half of the dynamic duo is in what is in West Africa right yes. now. So, so jo- yeah. yes. Joseph, who then, you know, Joseph Sambu, the, yeah. the restaurant is named after his family's um, name, uh, it, uh, he went to the Gambia to visit his family. Yeah. And what a timing. <laughs> You're like, you leave me in the middle yeah. of this. Come back now. What a timing, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, it was always the plan for me to to run the restaurant oh, sure. full time while he was in the Gambia. So I've been running it. And then this news happened. So I've been on like overdrive for the past uh, few weeks, just making sure that we are accommodating this this influx of customers that we've been getting. Yeah. It's a blessing. Oh, a huge blessing. Um, yeah. And I'm tired and I can't wait for him to come home. <laughs> so that He comes home tonight, doesn't <laughs> he? He comes home tonight. Yay. <laughs> so I hope he's not flying on an airline that has baggage issues or something. Oh, no, no, no. He, should, he, no, should, he, he should, be should be here. fine. You will go get a car and pick him up. I'll or, go, uh, for wherever he's at, I'm going to go get him. <laughs> how did the restaurant come to be? Oh, um, so Miss Sally, who was his mom, um, has has lived in Jackson for the past 13 years when she immigrated, when both his mom and him immigrated to the U.S. They had friends and family here in Jackson. What brought them here? 
uh, family. A family. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, that makes sense. They had uh, they had aunts and and some uncles here in Jackson, so they were trying to figure out like where where do they fit in, where yeah. do they want to settle. Um, and oftentimes, I know my family, when we immigrated, we went to New York City because that's where some of our family were, okay. right? Mm-hmm. right? But his family, uh, majority of them were in the Jackson area, so they came to the Jackson area. Um, and, you know, uh, their friends, um, their people around them were saying, you know, you should really open a restaurant. You should really open a restaurant because Miss Sally used to invite friends to her home and cook for them. Um, and at the time, and at the time, there were not a lot of, or there were not any African restaurants, mm-hmm. so it was going to be such a, a a great difference to to the Jackson community. And um, about two years ago, uh, Joe and I met in New York City, and uh, we were both going through a career transition. Huh. Um, he was working in government um, at the uh, mayor's office uh, in economic development. I was a school teacher turned school principal uh, for a decade. Wow. And we were both like looking for a career transition and we were both looking to leave New York City. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So we were thinking about different places and different things we can do. And this is during the pandemic, right? This is towards the end of the towards pandemic. The end of, okay. Yeah. Yes. So you've been uh, in lockdown for a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. And um, uh, we were like, his family's in Mississippi. Um, my family, we were, we're all over the place. We had, we're in Pennsylvania and Charlotte, all things like that. So we were like, I think Mississippi is, is the best place for us to move mm-hmm. uh, and to be closer to his family. And we made the move. And he was like, you know what? People have been motivating our family to open a restaurant. We're going to do it. It was a huge leap of faith. Yes. It was a huge um, investment. It was a whole family mm. investment. It wow. was uh, not That's only financial investment, but also like, time and effort and and emotional labor, all of those things, right? And uh, we made it happen and we came together as a family and um, we divided and conquered like menu, decor, furniture, website, all of those things that, um, you know, restaurants have whole teams to do those. Sure. We did it as a family and that's how we came about and almost a year old. First of all, and I mean, before I ask you this next question, I would just say i Cannot wait to go because I, I'm geeking out on the art that you have yes. in there. It is absolutely beautiful yes. the way you've got the place decorated. We tried very hard. We know that Africa is a big continent. It has a variety of different types of people, cultures, languages, food. There is no way that one restaurant can represent all of Africa. Right. Mm-hmm. But what we can do is we can try to give a little taste of different parts of African culture. So that's what we try to do in, in, in the restaurant. We have some art from Kenya. We have art from Ethiopia. We have art from Senegal. We have art from um, uh, the Caribbean, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the African diaspora is everywhere. So yeah. um, we, we're, we're trying to give a little taste of, of different types of African culture. And you'll see it when you walk in. It's, um, it's, 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 it's a modern take of an African restaurant. And um, we're really happy with it. And we're really grateful to how folks have been receiving it as well. I love the mural of the tree. So uh, I always have a hard time pronouncing this, but it's... I I was going to let you do that (laughs) because I I could have done it, but it would have been awful. Um, Boabab. Boabab is is a type of seed from the Boab tree, and Mm. um, this tree grows everywhere in Senegal and the Gambia. So it's like katsu. Absolutely. And it is huge. It is strong to the point where when I went to the Gambia with Joe this past um, winter... um, you, these trees are so strong. They've been there for like generations, oh, for wow. like centuries. You could tell they've been there for centuries. Wow. And people, it's really hard to cut them if you want to build a house. So I've seen homes built around the tree. So like in somebody's living room, there's a huge tree because you That's can't cool. really cut them. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. So um, these trees are so beautiful. They're so strong. They're, they are they they have huge endurance and there's seeds that are grown out of them which uh, can be made into smoothies. It could be made into a dessert. Um, there's a dessert that we have on and off, uh, depending on the season, called the nanburu. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's made from uh, the res- from those seeds. So, um, What a great metaphor for your restaurant. Right. I mean, think it's strong. Yeah. It's going to last generations. Yes. And you can feed people off of it. I didn't even think about that. You're so right. That's pretty good for a Monday morning. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no. Let, let's write this moment down. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's really cool. I mean, I think I saw pictures of it. So yeah, I can't wait to see it in person. It's beautiful, yes. So that's great. And that'd be fun for you to get to travel over there and get to see that too. Yeah, absolutely. I um, Again, I'm, I'm originally from Ethiopia, so yeah. I've, I've traveled back uh, a few times. Okay. I was born there, but okay. I've never... I've never been to West Africa, so it's great to see the Gambia Mm -hmm. and also um, travel to Senegal as well. How did you, like, so how did you run into each other in New York? Because like I said, everything was locked down. So, I mean, you managed to get out one day. Yeah, it's, uh, we just met through, uh, you know, the ether and the spirit. And uh, we just ended up um, getting to know each other through the internet. So that's how we met. So that that darn it. You mean some good things can happen from the internet. (laughs) That's good to know. That's good to know. How How did you come up with the menu? Because, like you said, there's 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 a whole bunch of tastes, a lot of yes. variety. And how did you decide? Was were there family recipes, or where did you? Come yes, up? a combination of uh, of a lot of different things. So the traditional African cuisine, like the mafe, which I can speak a little bit about in a second, yeah. uh, the mafe, which is also known as the peanut butter soup or the groundnut soup, that is a staple. That's a recipe that's been in the family, oh, right? Wow. Yeah. So the traditional West African foods. Um, we chose which ones will, which ones are like, can, can we make with the ingredients that we can find here? Yeah. Right. That's one. And then where we can get like suppliers for. Mm-hmm. And then second is which out of those, which ones will, do we believe that um, uh, the people of Mississippi will receive well? Yeah. Right. Um, and there were some trial and error. Right. Um uh, an example of the trial and error is the fish yasa. We used to serve it like a whole fish with mm-hmm. the head on. Yeah, <laughs> keep doing which, it. Yeah, which is very normal. Yeah, in Africa and the Caribbean, like you eat fish with the head on, and obviously you don't eat certain parts of the head. But here, when we serve it, people were like, "Oh, it's so weird." They get scared <laughs> when they see the whole. We fish. do whole fish. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I'm like. Get over it. Yeah. So <laughs> this, is how, this is how you do it. <laughs> so we were like, okay, we're going to serve it differently. So now our fish yasha, yasa is with our filet fish. Uh-huh. Um, uh, so yeah, trial and error also w- played a part in, in how we finalized the menu. And then uh, part, of our, uh, part of our menu includes some Caribbean foods, right? The jerk mm-hmm. chicken, the curry chicken, the goat curry, the oxtails. These are predominantly or historically Caribbean dishes. You know, the African diaspora is, is well represented in our re- in restaurants. So we just chose the most popular, most well-known um, Caribbean food. So we add that to our menu as well. Hunter, she just said something that kind of made me think about what you do. It's one of the things that I think your restaurant's famous for. And I think that you really stress is you try to find local sources mm-hmm. to get your ingredients from. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really kind of, you know, people say, what do you love to cook? You know, what inspires you? It's really with the seasons and interacting with farmers, you know, earlier you're talking about oxtail right. and the pricing. And so I like texted my farmer friend. I was like, do you have oxtails? Cause you know, it's like sometimes their stuff is cheaper yes. if they can't sell it. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm about to change the menu. And so, you know, I'll text the farmer and be like, what can't y'all sell? What are you right. having trouble selling? Oh, wow. And it'll send me a big list. And oh, that's, that's just nice. fun to be yeah. like, all right, what can I do with pork necks, pork yeah. jowls? You know, and then it kind of puts me That's in like awesome. a creative like pinch, um, and it's just I feel like it, it kind of full circle supports the farm. Yes, people want the steaks and the ribeyes, but how do you use the whole animal? Yeah, um, I love that hunter, and I think we should definitely connect because I would love to like have direct communication and direct line with farmers. I yeah. think we're very grateful for our suppliers, mm-hmm. and I think we want to be able to like really connect. With yeah, the totally. folk, with the farmers of Mississippi mm-hmm. and, and and be able to like work together. So I think I love that you're working with the farmers in that way as well. Well, as you can see, uh, we're the show's about to go into a new direction with <laughs> these two talking to each other because this is going to turn into some great radio. We're with Sophia Muhammad, co-owner of Sambu's African Restaurant and James Beard Foundation Award semifinalist for Best New Restaurant. And we said earlier. But congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Again. So, so well deserved, to say the least. And of course, we've got Chef Hunter Evans as well as LV's Restaurant. And also, um, you're on the short, you're on semifinals now for Best Chef. So, yeah. that's all. I mean, I feel like I'm sitting here with two rock stars. <laughs> and you're sitting here talking to each other, going, yeah, we need to connect and we need to do the other. And, it's great. and let me ask you that because, you know, 
and, and I found this about media in this town, is it like most places, media, they like fight to death. You know, you've, you've yeah. seen Anchorman where they have the gang wars and right. stuff like that. <laughs> Very true to life. That happens all the time. Here, we pretty much all get along. Is it that way in the restaurant business too? Or do, are you all so busy just trying to keep the doors open that you don't really get a chance to get to know each other too well? I think there are opportunities. There's events and stuff that I love to do. Group therapy? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you know, solely or the most fun at going to these events or doing things is having a table next to a, the sh- rest, restaurant or a chef and getting to talk to them. Yeah. Um, yeah, usually during the week it's kind of hard to, le- you know, get out and go eat on a weeknight or whatever. But, yeah, it's it's very fun. And also, I mean, it's one of the joys of being in the industry. It's full of so many great people, and it's fun to get out be in the studio, you know, work events and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I learned how to become a cartoonist by watching other cartoonists yeah. Yeah. in a way. So, I mean, y'all comparing notes and you're like, oh, that's, yeah. that's a good way to do that. Yeah. I know you're just sitting here going, oh, yeah, suppliers, that would be a really great thing for me yeah. to figure out how to do. Yeah. I think, I mean, there's room for all of us here. Yeah. Right. And I think that maybe in New York, there's like a really crazy competition between mm-hmm. restaurants, um, which there's a competition with every industry in New York City. (laughs) But I think here, I think the culture in Mississippi as a whole is like really supportive. Um, Even even when we first opened, um, whether it's uh, customers who don't have their own businesses themselves or customers who have their own restaurants, they've, they come to see us. They specifically see us out to not only support, but like collaborate and, and see what, you know, what type of work we can do together. So we've really felt love and supported and, uh, and the desires for, to collaborate is there. Um, admittedly, we've been really busy. These yeah. past 11 months yeah. have been really busy and, um, Sam Boos right now we're open seven days a week. So, oh, wow. Yes. Wow. That's crazy. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, it's a lot. Um, put, so, the, put the heads back on the fish and take a day off. <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's your advice for, yeah. from Chef that's Hunter right. Evans today. Uh, Joe, I hope you're listening and uh, listen to that advice. Um, but uh, no, I, I think that the collaboration, the desire for collaboration is there. We are just so busy right now. Yeah. We haven't had the time mm-hmm. um, to connect with other restaurateurs. Uh, but we will in due time. Well, I think you have today. Yeah. yeah. I think, and one of the goals at Elvis this year is every month we're doing like a guest chef dinner. Nice. And last in January, we had Palm and Pine out of mm-hmm. New Orleans. Mm. And then they were also on the list for Best Chef South. And then February coming up, we have Vish Wesh and from Snack Bar in Oxford. Mm-hmm. He won James Beard a couple of years ago. In March, we have Chris Hastings yeah. mm-hmm. from Birmingham. He's also one of James Beard. He's coming. And I reached out to Sam Booz, and I think they should come to LV's and do a pop-up. Listen, so. we're open to it. <laughs> oh, this is great. See? I, all right. Jermaine, right now, write it down. Today's show is actually going to – it's going to make history. It's going to make history today. Um, that's fantastic. Hunter, you, you talk a little bit about your grandmother. And I was yeah. joking a little bit during the break about my grandmothers. They were really good at, at making mock apple pie and things like that because they survived the depression and everything. So I didn't quite get the same <laughs> culinary uh, experience that you got from your grandmother. Tell us a little bit about your grandmother because obviously her DNA runs through everything from the name down through how a lot of the restaurant, how it's done. Yeah. Um, so she grew up in Metairie, uh, which we went to a lot growing up. And I don't have the story where a lot of the chefs, you know, were like tugging at the apron or like at the counter making and cooking food. I was kind of running around just playing. Yeah. But I think being that close to the coast and just like being in New Orleans, there was always like really great shrimp and crab. And she always cooked the same mm-hmm. similar dishes. So I have a lot of memories of her in the kitchen and eating around the kitchen and being with family. And so I, I feel like that is, was kind of something I didn't realize till later when I was kind of like, this is what I want to do. Um, it was very personal and I had a lot of memories of, this is where we spend a lot of time and this is what we know and this is how we commune. Um, so yeah, she would always do artichokes and stuffed artichokes, oh, wow. artichoke dressing. And so one of the things that I have on the menu is oysters El Verretta. And it was kind of a nod to Oysters Rockefeller. 
And it was kind of in the same way, like, I want Elvie's to be, like, the next 100-year-old restaurant, like these old New Orleans restaurants. Mm -hmm. Um, And nobody knows what's in Rockefeller and whatnot. (laughs) But Oysters Elvaretta, which was her full name, um, has artichokes and Parmesan and bacon and whatnot. So it's kind of stuff that I remember her cooking and kind of a nod to the Rockefeller. And maybe this will be the next, you know, top dish or whatever. But Well, it sounds like, you know, I – I love the fact, and like I said, I, I try to paint. I like to paint. I, I mean, that kind of artist. But I mean, your palette obviously is your menu, and, and yeah. you create. And I just love the fact that you have a living menu. That you're constantly yeah. thinking of new things, and you're bringing new things, and it keeps you fresh. And, it, and that has to be one of the things you have to enjoy the most about having your own restaurant. Yeah, and you know that whole part of. Um, kind of naming after my grandmother and in the old home that Elvie's in. One of the joys of owning and operating a restaurant is also creating that experience and getting to know people and to serve people yeah. and somebody walking in and, oh, you know, hello, Mr. Whoever. Like, we know them. We know their favorite wine. We can recommend, you know, oh, yeah. and having that relationship where they walk in and see, feel known and are seen. And, you know, that experience is kind of what we strive for um, via food and you know, wine and cocktails, but I mean, food is so tightly into the DNA of the language of Mississippi yeah. and, and, you know, I mean, food, family, faith, you know, you know, mm-hmm. but, but food is so important for what we do. And that's why I love, but I say both, both the concepts of both your restaurants, mm-hmm. because like I said, they, they take you to a very, take you home mm-hmm. in, in, yeah. in its own different way. Your, your actual restaurant footprint, you know, it's not huge. I mean, no. you, you don't have, <laughs> Small. you don't have a space for parties of 14. In fact, I think you right. limit it to yeah. eight, right? Yeah. Um, so on that, but it's a very intimate and it's a very yeah. warm atmosphere in there. Yeah. We just kind of learned, you know, over the past couple of years, we, with certain, you know, limits or restrictions, we can provide the best and better service how we would like to do it. And if we just have a huge table, we have a very tiny kitchen and it's yeah. just hard. And it just, yeah. I think we fall short on trying to put up 20 entrees at once. And yeah. so, yeah. Um, people are really understanding. We love putting people next to each other, you know, but also at 12 top, you're not going to talk to the person at the end. So good point. Maybe let's just scale it down <laughs> and we can, it can be more manageable. And I think everyone would enjoy it more. Yeah. The pandemic, obviously. Um, and I've talked to several people in restaurants in this town and interviewed them and talk about the challenges they've had and everything else. But one thing I've discovered about challenges, it's, they're also incredible learning experiences. Yeah. I mean, you know, you talk about CIA, but the education you probably got over the last three years would have been a doctorate degree. Yeah, there's no handbook or course on a pandemic. On survival. Yeah, Yeah. literally on that. But, I mean, what were some of the things that you did to be able to survive during that time? Yeah, so we shut down um, and we kind of put press pause on just, I think, as everyone did, of, okay, what can we do? What can we not do? Um, Okay, can't have anyone in the dining room. Um, so one of the things that I was kind of struggling with was, all right, you know, the public school system also had shut down. Mm-hmm. A lot of those kids need that meal. And so in my head, I was, okay, I can't, I, they're saying I can't serve people in this building, but that doesn't mean I can't keep cooking food mm-hmm. for people. Oh, wow. So we got our staff together, you know, and one of our goals was not to fire anyone during the entire thing. So we're going to pack a bunch of school lunches. We'll pay y'all. Y'all come, you know, safely, however we can do it outside. And that was one of the first things we did was we packed a thousand school lunches and just reached out to different programs. Like, hey, come grab 400, come grab 30. I can guarantee that what you were serving was way better than anything (laughs) I ate in school. I can just tell you that right now. (laughs) We did some sandwiches, you know, yeah. some juices. and Yeah, but you could uh, identify it. I couldn't yeah, really identify yeah. half the stuff I was eating. Um, but. Yeah. And then, you know, we another way, you know, you talked about suppliers. Um, Home Place Pastures, one of our really close friends up in Como, Mississippi, they raise uh, most, mostly pigs and cows. Mm-hmm. And their restaurant, you know, income kind of halted as well. Yeah. About, so yeah. they took a hit and... We teamed up with them and bought a couple of hogs and cooked them and did like a thousand sandwiches for hospital workers. So we did like nice. a hog hog uh, roast for healthcare. Oh. Um, yeah. So we just kind of, I mean, it was also kind of just like, this is what our staff loves to do. We love cooking and serving. Yeah. So 
Yeah, how but it's very continue, therapeutic. Too. Yeah, You're how giving. do we continue? Because yeah. I mean, half myself is like, I don't want to sit on the couch. You mm-hmm. know, it's like we want to do stuff. So, and then all right, things were getting kind of more comfortable or more clear, I guess, of what we could do. And so then we started doing our pop ups, and every weekend we would do a different takeout menu pop up, and it was really kind of like all right, what's interesting? What do y'all want to cook? And we did New York deli because I lived in New York and I missed that kind of food. Then the next day, we would, or the next weekend, we would do um, Mexico. Um, we did sandwiches. We did Chinese. Mm-hmm. And it was really like, all right, y'all want to explore some cuisine? Yeah. And, you know, so it was kind of like a culinary crash course for the staff. Of like, all right, let's dive into all these cuisines and learn techniques. And it was just fun to, to serve you know, the neighborhood and fun for the staff to cook. Nice. So that's that's how we survived. You're listening now. You're talking on MPB Think Radio. I hope you've been listening so far. This is a great show today. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey of Mississippi Today, and we're with Sophia Muhammad, co-owner of Sam Boo's African Kitchen, a James Beard Foundation Award semifinalist for Best New Restaurant, and Chef Hunter Evans from Elvis Cafe, who is nominated for Best Chef in the South. Uh as well, and about to say, we've had a great conversation a little bit. You know, Hunter, you were talking about getting through the pandemic, how you were just basically throwing things at the wall, trying new things. But the, the golden thread that ran through all of it is that you were giving back to the community. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think people remembered that, you know, when suddenly we could go back to go eat. They were like, man, that was really cool that he did that. We need to come back and go check out what they've got going yeah. on. Yeah. So that yeah, probably was, helped. That probably helped in the survival thing. Down yeah, the it was, I mean, it was fun. It was. Yeah, that's all we knew to do, really. Yeah. So um, yeah, I know you're not going to get a medal for that, but that was still <laughs> you're still here. And like I said, both of you have probably dealt with water issues over the last year because that's been we've heard a lot about that, how that's been really tough on the res, mm-hmm. restaurant business here in Jackson. Yeah. And dealing that. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess you're both have figured out ways around it and to be able to survive because, you know, it's going to be on and off probably until they get it fixed. But right. it sounds like things are going in the good direction. Hopefully keeping my fingers crossed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> you're like, we don't want to talk about that. OK, <laughs> we're in therapy right now because of that. And it's really on. The, um, I tell you what, we're at the point in the show where you can to ask each other questions. If you'd like to, if you have any questions for each other, I'm mean, Whoever wants to go first, that's fine. So I have, I mean, maybe this is for both of y'all. Okay. So we were talking about coming up with menu or like doing stuff. Maybe it's creating a cartoon. Yeah. Prior to being recognized or told by someone else, hey, that is really good. Does that free you to put the fish on the head Mm. or to leave it and serve it how you wanted to serve it? And then, you know, people are like, I don't like it. Like, well, I mean, this is, or, you know a cartoon that you never thought you would draw now you have more like confidence to be like well if you don't like it you, you know yeah yeah when i was in seventh grade i would draw cartoons to try to get attention of girls and i did not and by the way i just i'd always told my sons it doesn't work okay <laughs> learn to play the guitar that's a lot better st- strategy than drawing cartoons but i guess now that i'm older i generally am cantankerous and now i just kind of draw whatever yeah. i'm thinking yeah. doing because i you know i've been doing it long enough yeah. on that so i think when you start out you know you try to look to please people right. obviously yeah. and I'm and, there's you know, a balance. and there's a degree of commercial success too because yes. you got to eat you yeah. know so you want to make sure you do work that's commercially viable also yeah. so you know if it's people are not buying it with the head on there i guess you yeah. gotta cut the head off for right now but after a while you might start slipping head on there every once in a while absolutely i think it's um it's, it's a balance as you said mm-hmm. right we uh want to make sure that we're being attentive to feedback from customers mm-hmm. right and we're um you know, we're introducing certain a, a certain type of cultural cuisine, mm-hmm. but we also don't want to shock people, right? Right? Like little by little, people will start getting used to maybe the fish on the head, maybe not on the first version of the menu, mm-hmm. right? Maybe now we're a James Beard nominee, then the fish on the head will like have more yeah. credibility. I kind of like being shocked sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think we just wanted to, uh, yeah, just be mindful about uh, how how we were introducing these mm-hmm. men, these items. Um, and, I, you know, as, as, a, as a new restaurant, I think it does it does take time to mature as well. And I think with, with time and experience and accomplishments, mm-hmm. we will even get more confident around um, maybe shocking some people yeah. uh, with our cuisine. So I think with time, 
uh, we'll be able to put whatever it is that we want on the menu. Yeah. Hunter, if you want to be shocked by cuisine, come to my house. I'll cook, <laughs> I'll cook for you, okay? I will cook you something, and it'll shock you, and it'll scare you. Marshall, I've got a question sure. for them. So Jermaine's here, but I wanted to know, you all cook so much good food. I mean, like, quality, rich, nice foods. What is one thing that you have that you like that is not like the healthiest thing oh. <laughs> is there a junk food that you prefer tell me like your one um i guess you would call it i guess sinful design. guilty sin, <laughs> guilty guilty. sin? <clears throat> mm. <laughs> is it you mean on the menu or like no just anything any, okay. like late at night when you're oh. just yeah just getting off work uh so <laughs> I, I they eat so well they're like no. i have no junk no. food <laughs> i do love flaming hot cheetos okay Hot okay. chips. Uh, I'd say uh, maybe forty percent of my diet is the <laughs> peanut butter filled little pretzel things. At, like, oh my gosh! Those when I get home from work, yeah. I'm like, you can get them like at the Costco yeah. Sam's thing in, in a drum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My wife's like, you just left the restaurant. Why are you eating? I'm like, yeah. Just, <laughs> stress, yeah. stress eating. So mine is. Obviously, in great quantities, it could be very unhealthy. <laughs> so mine are two things. One is red wine, and then two is chips and guac. Yes. I Solid love choices. chips yeah, I and guac. Back. Support both of those. Yes, and yeah. both of them together is heaven. Heaven, yeah. yes. No, don't tell my wife, but I'm having an affair with little Debbie, so we're not yeah. going to mention that on that. Uh, real quick, we got about five seconds. Websites? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elvisrestaurant.com. Okay. Ours is SambuAfricanKitchen.com. This is great. I had so much fun with y'all today. Thank (laughs) you. Oh, this is fantastic. All right. Well, thank you for listening. And thanks to our special guest, Chef Hunter Evans from LV's Restaurant and Sophia Mohammed, co-owner of Sambu's African Kitchen, for joining me today. And if you'd like to hear this again or any past episodes, you can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app or on our MPB Public Media app. Now You're Talking is a production of MPB Think Radio with episode and podcast produced by the one and only Jermaine Flood. Hey, stay tuned. This is Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit is coming up next. And join us next Monday at 10 a.m. I'm Marshall Ramsey. I hope you all have a great week. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.